Hey everyone, I'm Mine, and this is set number 75333, Obi-Wan Kenobi's Jedi Starfighter from the LEGO Star Wars theme. This set contains 282 pieces, 3 minifigures, and retails for $29.99 in the US. So here's the main build of the set, Obi-Wan Starfighter itself, and being completely honest, buying this set, I didn't have super high expectations for this. I was mainly buying this set for the figures, specifically for Obi-Wan and R4, so the build was just whatever I was expecting to be, just another Star Wars ship. But I have to say, now that I have it built up, I'm very happy with it, and it makes me especially especially happy that I picked it up, because this build is fantastic. For one, and this is credit to the design team behind Star Wars Episode Two, this ship is so much more visually interesting than most of the Star Wars ships we get. So many Star Wars ships are just gray, or they're just like recolored X-Wings, but this isn't an X-Wing and also has a really unique color scheme. Like just dark red and white is whatever, but the lime green being there too adds that nice little extra touch that really makes me appreciate this build. The size of the ship's also a lot bigger than I was expecting. It's very long and the wings aren't super wide, but the shaping is really fantastic. A little bit the gappiness between the body of the ship and the wings. Not the biggest fan of that, though I'm not sure how they could have prevented that. I wish there was something a little bit more there to make that not as obvious, though. There's a sticker on the front that shows that little touch of green. Stud shooters on the wings. Moving further back, you have a few more stickers that have these white stripes. Again, just a nice little extra bit of detail. And I love, like, how the wings themselves are actually grabled with, like, these triangular dark red pieces, and then these super pointy white pieces with the green piece underneath. I think this part especially, I just love that tiny little streak of green right there. When I put that piece on, that's where I'm like, okay, yeah, I really like this set. You can see the opposite wing, it's mostly the same, though you have the Galactic Republic logo right there. While on this side you have this rotating piece where you attach R4, and I'll show you that in a moment. There's also like a little disc on this side, which is not on the other side. You've got these engines that attach underneath the wings. I like the trans yellow at the back to show that like these are being used and this is flying throughout the air. The shaping of the back is really nice. I love how it all comes up to a point right here. And while I'm not like the biggest stickers person in the world, I think these stickers are used very tastefully. There is quite a few in this set, but I don't know, I feel like they really serve their purpose, and it doesn't feel like they're being used in place of detail. It feels like these stickers are meant to represent like paint jobs on the actual vehicle, which I think is where stickers work best. You can see there's this large rounded windshield piece and that opens up into the cockpit, and it's actually pretty spacious in there, and that's where you can have Obi-Wan sit. Just plop him in there like that, he sits very comfortably, and then you can close it back up around him, and there's how he looks actually flying the ship. Directly in front of him, there's a section right here which has a few more stickers on it, and this can actually open up. And that is to help incorporate R4 into the build. Now, this is my favorite part of the set. So, in the movies, R4 attaches into Obi-Wan's wing, and then you can see his little head poking out right here. However, that doesn't really necessarily work in the real world. R4 is just too big to fit in there. So, LEGO came up with a really cool solution. Back when I was a kid in the past, sets like this would actually only come with R4's head and not his body. Like, I remember when I was a kid, one of my best friends had just an R4 head and no body for him. So, when we were, like, playing together, he would play with just R4's head, and I always thought that was super lame. But you can see, still take R4's head off and attach it right here, and it's able to spin and like navigate for Obi-Wan and everything, but instead the set is like not coming with the body, you actually store it in the center right here. You're able to plop it in like that, and then close it back up like this. And there you go, R4's body is perfectly hidden, so you can have Obi-Wan fly around with R4 on the ship, and then when you've landed, you just reassemble him. That is really cool, and I really appreciate that they, like, took the time to find a place for him, because they even could have just included the full body and said, yeah, just put the body elsewhere while you're flying. But no, they actually found a way to store it in the ship, and that's genuinely awesome to me. And also, if you want, you can remove R4's body from there and store other things in there instead, such as, like, Obi-Wan's lightsaber and whatnot. Though there is another location to store that. If you flip the ship upside down, there's two clips. One of these you can have hold Obi-Wan's lightsaber while you're flying, and I know these are small things, but I don't know, it makes me really happy because this kind of stuff was not nearly as common when I was a kid, and I would lose accessories like this all the time, so seeing vehicles with official ways to store them is awesome, and there is actually one extra clip if you want to put something else there. And while we're here, one final play feature of the ship is this landing gear. With it, like you just saw, it's able to land flat on the ground, but if you want to change this into flying mode, you can just hinge it up. There you go. The front of it sits more on the ground like that, but with the landing gear up, you can imagine it flying through the air. Yeah, I mean, I know it's just a Star Wars ship, but I was genuinely really impressed by this build, and I'm super happy I got it. But of course, that's on everything with this set, so now let's look at the minifigures, and then I'll give you my overall thoughts. So here are the first two minifigures in this set. We have Obi-Wan Kenobi, and we have R4 P17. Now, this is an all-new Obi-Wan figure for this set based on Episode 2, and this guy looks excellent. Part of the reason I wanted to pick up this set is because I didn't have a good, like, prequels Obi-Wan figure, and I wanted one, and wow! I don't believe we've ever gotten this outfit for Obi-Wan before, like, officially in a set. But the reddish-brown for his cloak looks great. I absolutely love that. His face print is really good, too. Very detailed. And you can see he's got, like, his little microphone and everything for when he's actually riding in a ship. But if you want, you can also pop his hair off, turn his head around, and he comes with an alternate hood in the set for, I guess, when he's, like, exploring and he's not in a ship. That's a cool alternate look. I wish he came with, like, a cape or something, too, to, I guess, better represent the cloak, because the hood does look a little bit weird without a cape. But I get that the cloak's supposed to be printed on this time 
around. But yeah, something about that just seems a little bit off. I feel like that could have been done maybe a little bit better, but I'm not complaining because he does look really good like when the hood is down. There's a look at that face print up close, by the way. He's got like this confused face, which is an interesting expression for him, but it's different from the previous expressions we've gotten, which is nice. And this torso leg print is good. I like the brown cloak and then it's just pretty much standard Jedi robes underneath. It does seem like they're printed a little bit too lightly, which is disappointing, but at the very least they're consistently printed a little bit too light. It's not like the torso is a different color from the legs, so I can kind of overlook that. And then here's one last look at his back torso print and alternate face with like everything removed. And then R4 is awesome. He's just a red astromech droid, so obviously very similar design to previous astromech droids we've gotten. But personally, this is my first time getting an R4 figure. I know he was in sets like when I was a kid, but I think it's been a while since we got one, so I'm super happy to get him here. The colors are great. I really like the metallic printing on his head. Obviously, he's got that wraparound printing all the way around, but unfortunately, no back torso print, which we saw with R2-D2 earlier this year that now they're finally introducing back torso prints for astromech droids. So it would have been cool to see that here, but it's not a huge deal because we've dealt with what? 22 years of no back torso prints from them. So having one more astromech droid without it's whatever. But yeah, these are two figures that I'm honestly very happy with. And then the final figure in the set is Tawn Wei, the Kaminoan. And when this was revealed, I thought this was an exciting character to get. I wasn't necessarily super excited for the figure itself. I'm like, oh, that's a cool character that we're finally getting. Now having the hand though, this might be one of my favorite Lego minifigures of all time. It just looks awesome. The sand blue with the white is an excellent color combination. I know it's a very simple color combination, but I don't know, something about it just looks so great. The dress piece is really cool too, and I like that it is printed on the back, because we have gotten like other dress pieces printed on the back before, but it's not every dress piece we get, so that's a nice little extra bit of detail. But then that head sculpt is awesome. I feel like official pictures do not do that head mold justice. The neck is really long, it connects to the torso really well, it does an excellent job of representing how this character actually looks, and then the shape on that head is wild. The eyes look great, I love like the ring around the top of the head, the mouth and everything, and then you have like intricate molded angles genuinely just so fantastic. I'm really impressed by this one. I was not expecting to like this figure this much at all, but this just makes me even happier I decided to pick up this set, because yeah, it's great. This was probably a very difficult character to like figure out how to translate into Lego form, but I applaud the designers because they did a fantastic job. Really, really happy here. So what are my overall thoughts on this set? If you couldn't tell, I genuinely really love this set. As I said at the beginning of this video, I was going in fully expecting to just buy a set for the minifigures and then just sort of forget about the set itself. But now that I have it, I'm genuinely really happy I got this one. Because all three of the minifigures are really great. I was mainly buying it for Obi-Wan and his droid, but Tan Wei is actually probably my favorite minifigure of the set. And as you can tell, I'm genuinely very impressed by the build. It looks good, it's very fun, and it's unique, which is something that I don't say that often about LEGO Star Wars ships. So would I recommend this set? 100%. It's also one of the few fairly priced sets for August 2022. So if you're a fan of Star Wars, even if you're only like a casual prequels fan, I highly recommend you pick it up because it's not that much money and you just get like a great selection of stuff here. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please press like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I do Lego videos just like this one almost every day. So if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. Thanks for watching everybody and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.